The rigs I find myself using most often for CW are the Pentec uh, TR45L. I typically use this one here in the shack. And the Elecraft KX2 that I typically use operating portable for parks on the air. Now one thing I've noticed with both of these rigs, when I check my reverse beacon network spots, the reported word per minute character speed in the reverse beacon network is almost always higher than the settings that I set the keyers to in both of these rigs. That leads me to believe that the settings don't accurately reflect the actual keyer speed. So in this video, we're actually going to measure the actual keying speed for various settings on the both of these rigs and see what the actual word per minute speed is. Now let's first talk about uh, how the word per minute standard has actually arrived. The standard word that is used for computing words per minute is the word Paris, followed by the spacing that would be between the, that word Paris and the next word. And as you may know, or you may recall from my video on the basics of Morse code, uh, the characters are made up of uh, dits and das, uh, where the dit is essentially one unit length in time, and the da is three unit lengths, and the space between the dits and the das within a given character is equal to one dit length. And then the space between characters is the same as the da, or three unit lengths. And then finally, the space between words is seven unit lengths. So if you count up all the unit lengths in the word Paris, followed by the seven, spa seven you know, dit spaces after it, there's 50 units, 50 time units, in the word Paris and that space. So uh, if you run the math, and I'll, I'll give a link down below where you can find that if you're interested, uh, it works out to uh, these formulas here for computing word per minute. Uh, the word per minute is simply 1.2 divided by that unit length if you measure just the single unit length. Now I'm not going to actually use the word Paris to actually measure the word per minute speed for a couple of reasons. One is I don't want to just measure the single unit length because the keyers might actually have a little bit of a different spacing between dits and das, or the unit length of a dit might be a little bit different than the unit length of a space between them in the keyer. Uh, so I don't want that to throw things off. And also, the gap between characters is not controlled by the keyer, but it's controlled by the operator, like me. So I don't want that to be a variable. So I want to actually use a different character set to uh, accurately measure just the keyer's performance in terms of speed. So I'm not going to use the word Paris. Now I'm going to use a pattern that contains only keyer controlled timing, so no timing that's controlled by me, so that uh, that takes me out of the picture. And also I want to ensure that the character that I use or the sequence that I send has all possible sequences. So a da followed by a da, a da followed by a dit, a dit followed by a da, and a dit followed by a dit. Now conveniently, the letters C and W, if I run them together with no spacing other than the normal spacing between the elements within a character, this has all those combinations. There's a da followed by a dit, a dit followed by a da, uh, two dits and two das, so I have all of these combinations. So if I just send, send the letter C immediately followed by W without creating the space in between the two, I can basically measure how long it takes that sequence to happen. And if you count up all of the unit times, that's 21 unit times. So all I'll simply do is measure with the oscilloscope how long it takes to send this sequence of elements and measure this delta t. And then I can calculate the words per minute by taking that 1.2 divided by delta t and multiplying it by 21. I'm going to do this by directly measuring the RF output of the transceiver, but of course I could do it by maybe probing the speaker and listening to the side tone. But I just happen to have all these components here, so I'll just do it by looking at the RF directly. So I'll have the RF coming from the radio coming into here. This goes into this RF tap. Uh, that's going to tap off a very small piece of the RF signal, which is getting terminated into this dummy load, and then that output is going into the scope. And then we'll just do a capture on the scope to acquire that pattern. Now the scope is set up for a triggered capture. I'm running at 200 milliseconds of division, which gives me essentially two seconds 
of time across the display, and that'll be sufficient to capture this sequence of events uh, for you know anything greater than about uh, 15 words a minute or so. I'll be able to use this uh, time-based setting. All right, let's start with the TR45, and let's set the keyer speed to uh, let's see, just 15 words a minute. So there's a 15 word per minute setting, and let's send that uh, sequence of characters. Now let's see what we caught on the scope. We move our cursor uh, to the end of the burst here. Our first cursor is already kind of at the beginning. So that's there. So it looks like our delta T is about 1.574 seconds. Okay, so that delta T equals 1.574 seconds. And if we run the computation, that tells us the, the actual word per minute uh, being transmitted is 16 words per minute. So we set it to 15, it was actually sending 16. Let's take a look at what happens when we set it to 20 words per minute. Okay, so we'll adjust the keyer speed up till it says 20 right there, and we'll send those characters. All right, let's go back to the scope, move our cursor over here to the end of this burst here, and it looks like we're at 1.14 seconds. Okay, so a, a delta T of 1.410 seconds gives us a word per minute, if we run that calculation, of 22 words per minute. So on the TR45, at 15 words per minute, we're actually going to get 16. When set to 20 words per minute, we're going to get 22. So I, you know, I'm approximately 10% faster, uh, a little bit less than 10% faster than what the keyer is actually set to. Let's look at the KX2. All right, we'll set the KX2's keyer speed to 15 words a minute, and we'll send those same characters. And we'll adjust our cursor here to measure the end of that burst. And that looks like 1.624 seconds. All right, so the delta T was uh, 1.624 seconds. So a little bit slower, so it's probably closer. And we run that calculation, and the word per minute actually being sent is 15.5. So it's only slightly faster than what we set it to at 15 words a minute. Let's check it at 20. All right, we'll set the keyer speed to 20 words per minute, and we'll send that same set of characters. And let's grab our measurement off the scope here. And that one looks like it is... 1.212 seconds. Okay, our delta T is 1.212 seconds. And we run the calculation for that, and we get uh, 20.8 word per minute. So just about 21. So, uh, so it's the KX2 is a little bit closer to the actual word per minute setting, and maybe only about 5% faster that's actually being sent compared to the TR45. Again, just good to know. So if I know I want to target sending at about 20 words per minute on the KX2, I'll probably set it to 19. Whereas on the TR45, I'd set it to 18, for example. Now the other QRP rig that I have here that I use occasionally is this uh, FX4CR. It's actually uh, a little bit more than QRP. It'll do up to 20 watts, but uh, I checked its keyer speed. I didn't, I won't record all the values here, but its keyer speed is actually pretty darn close, uh, within uh, you know less than a percent off. If I set it to 15, it was like 15.1 or something like that. I set it to 20, it was like 20.1 or 20.2. So it was actually very very close. So that's good to know that uh, when I use the FX4, I can kind of believe the keyer speed setting on it. Well, that was an interesting experiment. Uh, I've always felt that the keyer speed uh, setting on the Pentec TR45L was uh, kind of underestimating the actual uh, transmitted key speed. And that was confirmed by the reverse beacon network and now confirmed by actual measurements. The KX2 I thought was probably pretty close, but it turns out it, it's a little bit underestimating the key speed also. But in either case, uh, now I know how much of a difference there is. So if I want to kind of get used to a certain character speed or, or kind of standardize on a certain character speed, I know where to set each of these rigs so they kind of match. I hope you enjoyed this video, got something out of it. 
and uh, learned a little something about my test methodology here. Again, the important thing when I designed this experiment was to ensure that the timing that we were measuring included all the variations of the dit length, the spacing between the elements, the da length, and all of the combinations of dit to dit, da to da, and, uh, and that type of a thing. Just to ensure that I was only measuring the keyer performance and not any spacing that was controlled by my operation of the key. Thanks again for watching and hope to see you again next time. Take care.